guys, it's Parker from Test Prep Champions. Thank you so much for tuning in. This video is on how to compare and order numbers, how to do place values, and how to round numbers for GED math. So before we get started though, let's have a quick celebration. enough celebration for now. I just wanted to celebrate the fact that you're here with me, you chose to watch this video, and that you're going to spend your time with me here in this video to get closer to your GED goals, passing the test, and accomplishing whatever you want out of life. So again, thank you for that. And this video, it's probably not going to be as entertaining as what we just saw. I do try to make these videos fun, mix it up every now and then. Um, but we're going to get started with the lesson now. And so again, thanks for joining me. So in order to compare and order numbers, you have to really understand place values. And before we can round, we've got to understand place values. So the easiest way I think to do it is to just look at a big example. And if you're taking notes, you might want to put this example in the labels into your notes. So the two that I've circled in purple is in the ones place. The six is in the tens place. The eight is in the hundreds. Four is in the thousands. The seven is in the ten thousands. The one is in the hundred thousands, and the five is in the millions. So really, you'll just kind of want to memorize this. And I can give you an example here. Let's see. I'm just going to make this up as we go. So this will be your first test. So we've got 5,612. Okay, here's a pop quiz. Which place is the five in? So hopefully you remember that the five is going to be in the thousands place. Right, so if we look at our example here, in the example, the four is in the thousands place, and now in our little practice example up here, we see that the five is in the thousands place. Okay, so which number is in the hundreds place in this example number here? Hopefully you see that it's the six. Hopefully you see that one is gonna be in the tens place, and two is gonna be in the ones place. All right, so, not much more I want to say about this. Just make sure that you either memorize these numbers or you find a way to remember them through practicing different examples. So now we're going to look at how you actually compare numbers and we'll do some examples. Okay, when it comes to ordering numbers, a lot of students are okay with ordering whole numbers. It's usually fractions and decimals that give people the most trouble. However, I do want to cover two quick rules that you can use to get any question right just to cover all of our bases here and make sure that everyone understands how to do this. So the first rule that you want to know is that the numbers that have more digits are bigger and when the digits are tied, you'll compare the numbers going from left to right. So here's an example. You know the drill. Pause the video if you want. Try it on your own. Okay, so whether or not you pause the video, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how I would do this. So I'm going to show you how to use it, how to do this kind of question using the two rules I showed you. Um, but you're welcome to use a more intuitive approach or you're welcome to just solve this kind of using your own common sense method, however you want to do it. But I'm going to use these rules here just because some people do like to have a more logical analytical approach. So the first thing that I want to do here is let's look at the numbers. So we have 1,043, 2, and 589. So we want to order these from least to greatest. So we can use rule number one. We can count up the digits. So let's look at a thousand. So a thousand, we've got one, two, three, four. So a thousand has four digits in it. And 43 has two digits. Okay. And two is just one digit, so I'm not even going to circle that. And then 589, so we've got a five, we've got an eight, we've got a nine, that makes three digits. All right, so I could put that out here. So in this case here, like I said, all we have to do is count up the digits in all of them, and then to order from least to greatest, we're just going to say, well, two is the least number of digits, so two is the least. 
and then we would do 43 next because 43 has two digits only and then we've got our 589 okay and then the biggest number is a thousand okay so that's pretty simple and like I said you might have been able to do that more intuitively without needing the strategy but I wanted to highlight rule number one here because that's always going to work to get the answer and there's other intuitive ways to think about this like for example you can always think about it in terms of money right so if you were to win the lottery would you rather win a thousand dollars five hundred eighty nine dollars forty three dollars or two dollars well if you had your choice obviously you'd rather win a thousand dollars right or you'd rather if it came down to forty three or five hundred eighty nine dollars you'd rather somebody give you a gift of five hundred eighty nine dollars right so you can always think about these in terms of money Another way to think about it is in terms of counting. So which number would it take you longer to count to? 1,000 or two? Well, if I was gonna to count to two, one, two, that's all it takes, right? But if I wanted to count to 1,000, we'd be here for a little while. So those are two kind of ways to think about it. Or some people just automatically, intuitively can line it up and solve it without a process. That's fine. I wanna do one more example here, and then we're gonna move on to rounding. Okay. So here's another example. What you're going to do this time is order from least to greatest the, these numbers, 338, 331, 399, and 301. Go ahead, hit that pause button, and try it out if you want to. Okay, so time to go over this. And what we're going to do is this time, in case you're following along with the strategy I'm giving you, the first, the first rule here, right, is not going to work. So let me cross that off. And the reason it doesn't work is because each of these numbers has three digits. So what we want to do is we want to use the second rule this time because the digits are tied. So we want to compare the numbers left to right. So I'm going to rewrite these numbers and stack them up on top of each other. You don't have to do it this way, but it's probably easier, especially on, on a test. It only takes two seconds. On the GED, you'll have your dry erase board and hopefully you can read my writing here. It is pretty bad. It's a little bit better in real life, but not too much better. So what we're going to do, and let me make the pen a different color here. Let's go with red. Cool. So what we want to do is we want to compare the digits going left to right. So in this column here, okay, we see a bunch of threes. So this column's not going to really tell us that much. But the next column will. So let's just go down here. We've got a three. We've got a three. Okay, so the first two numbers are tied. Then we've got a nine here. Okay, and then we've got a zero. So if you were going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we would know that nine is bigger than three. Okay, so therefore, and, and we know that zero is smaller than both nine and three. So if we're going to write out the answer, so far what we know is we, we know that 399 is the biggest, okay? So we got 399 is greater than something, right? We don't know what that number is going to be yet, and that's greater than some other number, which we don't know what that's going to be, which is going to be greater than 301. So hopefully you are familiar with the greater than sign. If not, you'll want to know that for the test. Okay, so... Let me cross these numbers out. So we, we don't need to worry about them anymore. So the we, we found the biggest and the smallest. So now we're just comparing 338 and 331. So we've got a tie, we've got a tie. So here we look at the, the last digit. So we've got 338 versus 331. Well, eight is bigger than one. So we know that 338 is gonna be greater. So we can fill these in here. We know that 338 is going to be greater than 331. Okay, and there we go, there's your answer. 339 is greater than 338, which is greater than 331, which is greater than 301. Okay, let's get on to the fun stuff with some rounding examples next. Okay, so now we're on to rounding numbers, which is the point that we really wanna to get to. So here's a process here. These are four steps that I've written out, and they're gonna make a lot more sense as I show some examples. But basically, the first thing that you want to do is always find the number in the given place. So if the question says round to the nearest hundreds, for example, find the number in the hundreds place to start off. Or if it says round to the nearest thousand, 
start in the thousands place and pay attention to that number first. Okay, so then you're going to check the number to the right of it. And if that number is a 5 or a greater number than 5, you're going to round the number that's in the hundreds place up or the thousands place or whatever the given place was in the question. You're going to round that up. If not, you're not going to change it. Then lastly, all the digits to the right of the given place are going to become zeros. And what I mean by the given place is whatever place that they are asking you about. So, for example, let's say, let me give you an example here. Let's do 3,400 and 50. Okay, so round this to the nearest thousand. Go ahead, pause the video if you want, try to round this to the nearest thousand. Okay, so here's how you would do it. So find the number in the given place. So in this case, since I'm asking you to round to the nearest thousand, find the number in the thousand, that's thousands place to start. Okay, let me use blue here. So the number in the thousands is the, is the three. So then what you want to do is check the number directly to the right of it. So we check the number to the right of it, which is going to be four. And that's step number two. Okay, so now we're going to do step number three. If it's five or greater, round up. If not, don't change it. So four is less than five. So we're not going to change the number in a given place, right? So if this four was a five or greater, we'd go back to the three, bump that up to a four, okay? But since it's not, we just leave it. And then the last step, change the digits to the right of the given place to zero. So remember that at the beginning I said to round to the nearest thousand. So everything to the right of the thousands place, which would be the four, the five, and the zero, they're all going to become zeros, right? So the answer would be 3,000, and that's it. Okay. All right, let me give you another example here. Let me switch the pen. Okay, so this time I want you to round to the nearest 100, let's say. So let me make the number 5,677. So 500, six, uh, 5,677, round to the nearest 100. Ready? Pause the video. Go. Okay. Whether you paused or not, let's go ahead. Round to the nearest 100. So what we want to do is to start off, you want to find the number in the, the given place or the place that the question's asking about. So since I said round to the nearest 100, find the hundreds place. Pay attention to that first. Okay, so then the next step is to check the number to the right of it. So the number to the right is seven. Okay, so step three. If it's five or greater, round up. If not, don't change it. So seven is greater than five, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that number in the given place, which was the hundreds. I'm gonna cross that out and we'll round it up. So what that means is you just bump it up one, right? So the six, we bump that up to a seven. Okay, so step four, change the digits to the right of the given place to zeros. And so everything, to, so the given place again, since I'm asking about round to the nearest hundred, everything to the right of the hundreds place, Okay, we're going to make those zeros. So to rewrite this, the answer would then be 5,700. Okay. All right, so let me make that disappear, and I'll give you another example here. Okay, so this time we've got, let's say, let me make this even more interesting here. Let's go up into the millions. Okay, let me make this five, three, nine, one. Okay, so now we're going to round to the nearest million. All right, so round to the nearest million. Okay, so let me write that out here so you guys remember it, and so I remember what we're doing. Okay, so round to the nearest million. Go ahead, pause the video if you want. Okay, so whether or not you pause the video, let me show you how you would do this. So you can, I highly encourage you to pause the video, make sure that you did. You might have by now. And what, what I suggest doing is just follow the steps exactly. So we want to round to the nearest million. So the first step is to find the number in the given place. Okay, so here's our ones. This is, the five is going to be in the tens. There's the hundreds, then here's the thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. So the number in the millions is two. Okay. 
So then the second step is to check the number to the right of it. Okay, so go to the number to the right of it, and that's a 5. Third step, if it's a 5 or greater, round up. If not, don't change it. Okay, so that's a 5, so we're going to round up. So let me cross that 2 out. We'll bump it up 1 to make that a 3. All right, so now change the digits to the right of the given place into zeros. So all of these are going to become zeros. And the given place here, or the, uh, another way to say it, the place that we're asking about, that we're being asked about is the million. So everything to the right becomes big fat zeros. So we've got three million, and that's our final answer. Okay, that's the bottom line, it's three million. Okay, all right, let me do one more example here. This time, let's go to, we'll stick with this number here, but this time we're gonna go to, let's do the nearest thousand. So we'll do the nearest thousand. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to. This is your time to shine. This is your time in the spotlight. Okay, cool, whether or not you did that, Let's keep going here. So we're gonna to round to the nearest thousand. So what's the first step? The first step is to find the number in the given place. So we've got ones, tens, hundreds, here's the thousands. Okay, then next you're gonna check the number to the right of it. So what's the number to the right of that place? Well, it's a one. Okay, cool. So the third, if it's five or greater, round up. If not, don't change it. Okay, so are we gonna change the nine or not? No, we're not going to, and the reason is because that's that's a one. Okay, so what you're gonna do is change the digits to the right of the given place into zero. So then if nine was the place that we're asked about, which it is, everything else becomes zeros. And the answer would then be 2,539, or not 2,000, 2 million, 539,000, something like that, yep. Okay, so here's our final answer. All right, so I really want you to get some practice with this. Make sure that you tried these problems. If not, pause the video or rewind, go back, try these problems out that I showed you. And I want you to get some practice, get into your prep books, your practice tests, whatever you're doing it. And I want you to get your scores up so that you can pass. So definitely internalize these rules that I'm giving you here. Maybe make notes on them, write them down, get some practice and you're gonna be good to go. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching it. And if you're a party person, then I'm going to leave you with this. <laughs>